over here. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to Internet Writing Buddies. I am the Graceful Renegade, and sitting across from me is the wonderful Dork in the Road, aka Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello, Sarah is, is playing ball behind us. Yes. So enjoy that. I'm I'm great. I'm great. Yeah. I'm I'm great? Question mark. I, How are you? I think we're we're mildly frustrated, everybody, because well, I'm sure I we're pretty sure that the quality recording right now is good for you guys to watch. Ben and I are essentially blobs for each other uh, while we're recording, which is not exactly fun to record with, but we're going to do the best we can. Yeah, I don't know. Some Riverside setting, it was working fine before. Yes, we got ben new has... cameras because the frame rate was driving me nuts. I had so much screen tearing and my mouth was never lined up. <laughs> Because it was uh, the GoPro records at 30 FPS, but you can only record at 24, and so it would just get off. Hey, yeah. that's really annoying. Cool. What a great start. No one, you guys can't see my dog flinging a soccer ball around with reckless abandon in the background, but she picked right now to start playing. Anyway, anyway, what are we talking yes. about today, Grace. So one of the things that I was excited to pitch for an episode to Ben today was actually just. Going through a couple of questions that we see all the time on either the Internet Writing Buddies feed or on my page, whether it's Instagram or YouTube, and also within Ben's giant realm of over 100,000 followers. Uh, but yes, we just kind of figure what might be fun today is answering some of the questions we get asked. Uh, and I went through earlier this week and picked some of the more repetitive questions uh, just to kind of give some answers and obviously we'll banter like we usually do, but just to also give some insight to people of these questions we get asked all the time. And uh, yeah. So welcome to an effing a, oh my gosh, F A Q <laughs> episode. An effing A Q. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Honestly, the fact that I just made you laugh makes me happy because I knew you were not in a happy place when we started because of the video. So here we go. It's, it's, she almost makes it sound like we're answering the most annoying questions. That's not necessarily what's happening. No, it's not that they're annoying at all, because they're not. They're just the most uh, frequently asked questions, hence FAQ. It's the questions that pop up the most, either in the comments section or through messages, uh, especially the first one, which um, this is a question that I've been getting quite a lot on my own Instagram and YouTube page, which is, when is Ben doing a boudoir shoot? That's a great question. And, you know, it's funny you mention it because last year at the Giant Loop Ride, we had a whole plan for this great... Should I even say it? I don't want anyone to steal your idea. I'm going to say it. Screw it. Because yeah. if there's enough interest, we'll make it happen. For a yeah. men of ADV calendar. And the idea was it's just average dudes because that's sort of what a lot of most ADV writers are in uh, sort of a... What was that? Move Full Monty? Like the yeah. steel workers trying to... So we'd each take a month and just pose, and I was, of course, going to be December because Santa Claus, and I could reenact the famous uh, blank-in-a-box video from uh, from the Lonely Island, which, of course, is a classic work of, uh, of yes. cinema, cinema, you might yes. say. Yes, so it is. So if we ever make that happen, I guess that's the answer, but uh, before that, I don't know. Yes, by the way, I would love to do a Men of ADV calendar uh, due to recent events. I don't think it will be just aimed at Giant Loop. I think it will be for the uh, entire ADV community. I think it would be absolutely hilarious to do at some point. So if there are volunteers for this, um, and I will say as a prerequisite, you have to be at least somewhat friends with both Ben and myself to be a part of it. We're not just going to throw randos in there. Sorry, dudes. But uh, yeah, if this is something that interests anyone, I feel like we should make it happen. I think the better question is, would anyone want to see it? Because I mean, it's <laughs> obviously a joke, right? It's a funny, th so would it, because if there's no interest, why even do it? Like if it's just us being exhibitionists for no reason, but. I feel uh, like there are a lot of wives out there that even if they don't ride would probably laugh their asses off at something like this. Yeah. I mean, no offense guys, you're all wonderful, but you know, we're just built a little bit differently than you are, so. Yeah, no, it's a it's a gag. That's the point. <laughs> Definitely a gag. Yes. No one. I'm not like mm, everyone wants to look at me. No, it's just funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll just quick soapbox moment. By the way, 
One, I just want to say thank you to everybody who was insanely supportive about the, the boudoir shoot commentary we did when we interviewed me on the podcast a few weeks ago. Um, you guys are awesome. To all the people that kind of made snide remarks, um, you know, I'm just going to be honest and say, just keep it to yourself. Nobody asked, you know, like, sorry, but like, just nobody needs that negativity on social media. There's already so much of it. And also final note, just because we had that conversation openly does not green light you to be a creeper on my page. I've got some to, weird, weird that. comments, you guys. And you know what? I am very open in talking about a lot of this type of stuff, but that does not give you a reason to be extra creepy. Okay. So just dial it in, say nice things, be polite, but don't be weird. Don't make it weird because if you make it weird, I'm going to have to block you. I'm sorry. That's just the name of the game. I tried to cover that. I tried to make it clear that the, the, I, best, I feel the like best thing to do is leave a heart and move on. We we spelled it out pretty hardcore. But anyway, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. So we'll move on to the next question. But I uh, okay, just yeah. wanted to get that PSA out there. So one of the biggest questions, especially that I've been getting in the last few weeks, uh, Ben, I know you've been starting to get this as well, is what events are we doing this summer? So Ben, I'll tee you off to start first. <gasps> tee me off? Tee me up. To you. <laughs> I'm gonna piss you off so that you go crazy. Yep, you're um, teed up, I, buddy. My calendar is not nailed down, but uh, I have I expressed an interest in going to the Tour of, Tech, Tour of Texas event, but I would need help getting there, and I don't know if they're doing that. So, um, but that's next month. That's in March, and then uh, I just got an email from. I shouldn't be throwing this out there because I haven't even talked to them. A rally in Oklahoma, which. My mom's family's from Oklahoma, but I've never been there, so it would be neat to go. Is there ride riding it. in Oklahoma? Apparently, off there's a thousand miles of trails at this the Goat ADV rally. So I don't know. That might happen. I got to email them back. Um, also, no offense to Oklahoma, I just grew up in the Midwest, and we don't have a lot. So anyway, continue, Ben. Yeah. Well, that's close to like Jake the Garden Snake always says he has to go to Oklahoma to find any good riding from Texas. So yeah, now, their good riding and our good riding are probably different. I'm not yeah. going to say one is better than the other because, like, Colorado is different than here and, you know, it's different. But anyway, I don't know. I'm excited. I I haven't ridden anywhere but the West Coast, so I, I'm excited to try more places. Yeah. Um, and then in May, I'm going to uh, back up to Canada with the Traction ERAG guys for the Big Rock Candy Mountain event, which is similar to Grisbait but in a different area. And I am determined to not get my ass kicked this year. So trying hard to exercise, eat less food, and – once everything isn't totally muddy, I'm going to try to ride trails a lot more just to get ready for that. Uh, the Giant Loop Ride is the first weekend in June where we're going to see the premiere of Grace's documentary. Pretty excited about that. Um, I haven't, I don't have plans to go to this yet, but the BMW MOA Rally is in Redmond this year. So I would like to, It's that's so close, it would be dumb to not go in some not check it out, you know? What, what weekend is that event? I don't remember. It's June 13th through 16th. Yeah. And then Tour Attacks at the end of June. Um, we're going to run the NorCal BDR in early July. Black Hills ADV Fest, South Dakota. I'm 90% sure I'm going to that. That's in July. Dork in the Road Campout is uh, at the end of July. And then uh, the Dork Bait, that's what everybody's calling it. That's not actually what it is. The, uh, what is he calling it? Cross training skills for ADV riders, something like that. It's another event run by the Grizzbait. Uh, traction ERAG crew, but this one is half day training, half day trail riding, plus all the camping and everything else in Canada. Excuse me, at the end of August, and uh, still a few slots left for that. It is not cheap. It's an expensive trip at forty five hundred dollars, but that is your flight from Vancouver, all accommodations, food, bike rental, uh, training, riding, guiding, all that stuff. So it's it's a cool experience. Um, and there's still a few slots left, so we'll try to put a link to that, or I've linked to it on my page a couple of times. Yeah. And don't forget that's... Julian in November with me. Yeah, of course, that's a thing that exists. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is this just in. I should quit talking about it so much, in case it doesn't happen. But I've decided I've been working on the 300L all week, like refreshing it, putting new parts on and stuff. I just finished editing that video actually, and. I think I'm going to attempt to do not the whole thing, but uh, most of the Oregon BDR solo at some point this summer awesome. on that bike. Yeah, Hell we'll yeah. See. It probably won't end up being solo because I have so many friends. I'll be like, do you want to, I want to go. And I'm like, ah, screw it. But uh, that'll be fun. 
Yeah. What that about you? Where... Like one hell of a year, my friend. Dude, it, summers are so busy. I'm never home. Like, yeah. And we finally just figured out that that's just how it is. So my wife's kind of accepted <laughs> Tara's it. Tara's just accepted that, like, you're just gone yeah. all summer. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'll see you. <laughs> and I try to space it out. Like, I don't say yes to everything. But yeah, there's so much stuff I want to go to. And it's all so tightly. Com- it's all in June and July for some reason. Like, there's even yeah. very I mean, little that was kind of in September. That's how all of my summers are. It's like all of June and then early July. And then after that, it kind of dies off. But mm-hmm. holy shit. Yeah, I, uh, okay, so I have the Desert 100. I'm going to... You're going to the Desert 100? Yeah, I'm going because VB40 is sponsoring me to go help do some filming with them and to ride with them. Uh, okay. For those of you that don't Hopefully know, I work with uh, Veterans Back 40 Adventure quite a bit. I shot a documentary with them last year. That documentary will be premiering at the Giant Loop Ride, which I will also be attending the first weekend of June, which would be very cool. Um, it's basically an ADV uh, documentary that discusses uh, veteran and active duty suicide and the epidemic it's become not just within our own military, but with uh, military units around the world. So it's very cool. Um, but yeah, Desert 100. I will not be doing much on the interim before Giant Loop. My plan is really to just ride as much as possible. Uh, it's just... I've been so stir crazy the last couple of weeks with the weather we've had in Bend. It's just been very cold um, and we've had a lot of snow and ice. So riding has not exactly been possible. So yeah, Giant Loop first weekend, uh, Tour Tech. I'll be there with Ben. Um, I'm either going to be attending the Unrally in the Alvar Desert or I will be uh, doing some touring uh, with another couple of friends. I haven't quite been able to pin that down yet. We'll see, but I might be at the Unrally. I'll then be doing the NorCal BDR with Ben the first week of July, second week of July, something like that. Uh, I won't be doing any of the ADV Fest this year. Um, I kind of decided to opt out of those because I've been to them twice and they're a lot of fun. They're great networking events, but I'll be spending time with all of those people at other events this year. Uh, I'm, we'll be at the Dork camp out, which I'm excited about. Uh, it's going to be a very good time. That's, is that end of July or early August? I'm being vague about the dates on purpose. Okay. Attendees will know. I like, I like the, uh, I like the cloud of mystery. It's great. Um, yeah, I'll do the Dork camp out. Depending on whether or not Ben wants to help me out, I might go video some of the Grizzbait things that are happening in August. And then I'll probably end my year doing the ADV rally in Julian, California, as always, and trying to uh, build a team with my friend Maggie to do um, an all-female team to do that scavenger hunt. So, yeah, that's my year. It's going to be a lot of just events, really, in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not going to go too far uh, this year. I spent a lot of time on the road doing rallies and events the last two years, so I'm trying to stay close to home and, and actually enjoy riding here this summer. Yeah. Um, side note, sorry, not to not to steal your thunder, but I just want to warn you about potential drama that could occur because I just noticed Chewbacca is chewing on <gasps> the buffalo horn that I bought for Starbucks yesterday. And Uh-oh. she hasn't she hasn't noticed yet. She's sleeping on the couch and he's over here by my feet, but uh yeah. We'll see. Sorry. Okay, so my it might be a battle to the here. death. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, for those of you who don't know, Chewbacca is my pug, and he's old. And Starbuck is my much larger cattle dog, pit bull puppy, yeah. um, who is, she's a year old, so, yeah. Not only is Chewbacca old, though, but Chewie is obsessed with Ben. He, like, literally is your your shadow mini-me and won't leave you alone 24-7 when you're around. No, he won't. He's on my left. You don't even notice he's there anymore. I'm just like, oh, where so did you fun. come from? So cute. All right, but yes. Okay, so those are the events. If anyone has questions about any of the events we're going to be at, feel free to message us. Uh, but that's where you will find Ben and I this summer. Um, next question that I get pretty often, and Ben, I notice this pops up in your comments, especially like with your YouTube and the bigger videos and stuff as you've upgraded over time. But what camera gear do we use? Ben, what camera gear do you use? I really, I, uh, uh, okay, yeah, let me start because you're just going to make me look bad because you actually know what the hell you're doing. Uh, it just depends on, so I, I used to do everything on GoPros, everything, you know, even static shots and talking head stuff. 
I bought a Sony ZV-1 a couple years ago, and that thing is amazing, idiot-proof. Uh, it looks great all the time. The picture quality is very obviously better than any of the other cameras I've used. And uh, and it's small enough that I can take it on the bike, and it, it's not a big... This is a very small, compact, actual 4K camera. It doesn't have removable lenses or anything. So I use that for the majority. Like, the autofocus is fantastic. I never mess with it. I just hit the button and go, which is what I need, because idiot-proof. Yeah. Um, so that's my off-the-bike filming. I take it on camping trips and stuff. And then on the bike, it just changes all the time. Right now, I'm testing the Insta360 Ace Pro and really liking it. Uh, the battery life is good. I like the way the mic setup works. I've always liked Insta's accessories. They're reasonably priced. Uh, I've been using the Osmo Action 4 because the battery life on it is crazy, crazy good. Um, so those two. And then I have an Insta360 X3 that I use for all those. People are always like, how did you get that shot of you riding from outside the bike? It's because that thing's sitting on a stick out in front of it. So I use that pretty often these days. I'm too lazy. That's, okay, it's a combination. So I don't like to stop writing. I just want to ride. I don't. I want. I, I feel like I'm a writer first and a content creator second, which is bad because that's my job and I should really focus on the content creation. I disagree, but continue. But I don't like to stop and set up shots and ride past and go back and get the camera. I just don't. And and I will if it's something just like amazing. But that's why I love that 360 cam because I'm shooting B roll while I'm riding. And so it's much it's much easier to then just deal with it afterward than it is to stop doing what I'm doing in order to film yeah. and think about filming. So I'm not a photographer. I don't. Grace has an amazing camera that looks fantastic that she'll tell you about in a second. And I wouldn't even know how to turn the damn thing on. So Grace, what kind of cameras do you use? Uh, let's take a quick note here. I just want to say for the record, by the way. GoPros are some of the best cameras you can use because for the price, they are getting you incredible footage, incredible footage. And there are a lot GoPros of people. GoPros do you mean action cameras? Because GoPros. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, DJI, I think, has started to really uh, challenge GoPros presence uh, within the adventuring community. I'm a diehard DJI gal. I, of course, have GoPros, but um, let me go down my list, I guess. So for a lot of my more professional filming, I'm using a Sony a7S III. It's the camera I learned how to film on. It is an incredible camera. Also very decent with photography, but I am not a photographer. I'm a videographer. I can take photos. I try to stress that with people. It's very funny because everyone thinks that just because I shoot video, I know how to be a professional photographer. And the honest to God truth is, I don't know shit about photography. I know where the numbers need to line up and when things look good. And that's pretty much it. Uh, but yeah, so Sony A7S III. My drone is a DJI Mavic 3 Pro. It's an unbelievable drone. I get some just absolutely majestic, epic footage, especially out here in Central Oregon with the mountains and the desert. Fantastic. I just got one of the uh, brand new Pocket Osmos that I'm trying to use for more of my day-to-day -day filming versus having GoPro on a selfie stick, whatever else. And that thing is so handy and so crystal clear and easy to use. It is 100% dummy proof. I highly recommend if you are a content creator and you haven't used one of these yet, you're vlogging and doing all those things, give it a try. What else do I have? GoPros. I have GoPros on my bike. I have I think I have four of them right now. They're just an easy throw on the bike, get the B-roll footage like Ben was talking about, just to have a view riding or other things happening around you. Uh, the other things that I use to film get a little more complex you know, I have uh, all sorts of gimbals. I obviously have tripods I use. I have lighting I use. But uh, essentially, if you're going to see me out in the field working, I have my Sony a7S III, and that thing is glued to either me, the gimbal I'm using, which is, of course, a DJI Ronin, uh, one of the best you can buy, um, or it's on a tripod trying to get some still shots. But yeah, that's that's what we got. I think that's everything. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's a great long list. Well, this, and it's funny that your big cameras are Sony's too, because yeah. I had, um, what's the other brand? Uh, it's escaping me. I didn't like the autofocus at all. Uh, I had a hell of a time. It would always like pick things in the background and stuff. And it was an expensive camera. So the Sony yeah. autofocus is fast and the, it's pretty intelligent, I feel like. Yeah. So if you're looking for something that, and there's, there's also a middle ground, there's the ZV, I think it's 11. 
Mm-hmm. And it's the same camera I have, but with interchangeable lenses. So if you want to kind of, that's what Trav uses. If you yeah. want to try to figure that out, that's a good one too. But yeah, um, that's, that ZV-1, man, rock star. Yeah. If I broke it today, I'd buy another one, the same camera. Yeah. No need to upgrade. Lumix. <laughs> it was a Lumix. Lumix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and there's, again, like, I, I'm sure Ben can attest to this. We use a lot of different accessories for filming, or at least I do. I have, like, a million little things I have on me at all times. Um, if you ever want specifics on that, you can message me. The biggest thing I would ever suggest is if you're getting into any type of videography or photography, make sure you have ND filters because there is nothing worse than having glared up footage from sunlight. I didn't really understand how amazing ND filters were from a professional perspective until this last summer, but they have completely changed the game, particularly with my drone footage. It's awesome. So keep that in mind if you're looking at cameras, but I could talk about videography equipment for hours. So let's move on. Um, Are we married? Ben, we get this so much in the comments. So I would just like to clear the air on this question. Um, Ben, are we married? I am, but you're not. (laughs) Yes. So Ben and I are not a couple. We are very good friends. I am also very good friends with Ben's wife, Tara. She's one of my favorite people on the planet. Sorry, that was about to get bad. Uh Uh-oh. Chewy and Starbuck are going at it. But yes, Ben and I are very much friends, and I'm very close with his wife, but we are not married. And I think it's hilarious anytime people think we're married. <laughs> well, it's funny. It's like the whole men and women can't be friends thing. But yeah. also, like I guess because we have a rapport. Yes, because we apparently have fun talking to each other. It's a problem. But, you know, yeah, whatever. I'm also very happily in a relationship. So Ben and I are just buddies. We like to talk about motorcycles and get out and ride together. So that is for all of the crazy people out there. But... Moving on. Save Ooh. it for your dork in the road slash fic. Yeah. Or if you're making weird comments about my boudoir photos. Good mm. God. Um, okay. I so... took those, by the way, but we're just friends. <laughs> I did not take. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just throwing logs on you're the You're just fire. stirring the pot now. Nice yeah, work, I man. Know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, um, okay. So this question is one I know you get all the time on your YouTube channel, and I'm starting to get it all the time on mine, which is... What is the hardest part, in your opinion, about getting into ADV and dual sport riding? It's a hard question. It, it depends. I guess if you're saying getting into, then I'm <laughs> assuming this person is an adult trying to get into and not someone that grew up with it. Right. Obviously, because you wouldn't be getting into it. You'd, have, you'd be getting back into it, maybe. Um, I think it is the fear and anxiety of... There's a lot of unknowns, right? a lot of opportunities for disaster. Although it's nowhere near as dangerous as I used to think it was. Like, I think I've told you about r- going out on my first dual sport, real dual sport gravel ride and like being afraid that I was going to pop a tire because I was riding on gravel, just like stuff like yeah. that. Like you just don't know what you don't know. And yeah. when you're older and you get into something like this, it, it, the consequences are more severe, right? Like when you're a kid, you fall off your skateboard. It's like, whatever I yeah. You know, one, you just don't get hurt as easy. And two, it doesn't matter if you do, because what? You get to go to school with a cast on and everyone signs it and you're the cool kid for yeah. for six weeks. But as an adult, like getting camera, what are you doing? Uh, you know, getting hurt is easier and way more consequential. And so yeah. it's difficult to push yourself outside the comfort zone. It's difficult to attempt new things. And everything is like, especially because it's if it's all new, like the things that used to scare me like gravel roads and the wobbliness you get, right? Like that is, that is very not comfortable when you're first getting into it, right? When you're first doing it. So I think it's, it's fear and anxiety. I think it's, um, the, the cost is also a big one. Like it's not a cheap hobby to get into. Yeah. And that's also adds to fear and anxiety. Cause like, I just spent all this money on this bike. I don't want to ruin it. Right. When really that's kind of the point. Um, you'll, you learn that eventually. I actually get excited yeah. the first time I drop a new bike. Now I'm like, Oh, thank God. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. But, uh, so that the fear and anxiety, um, because of the consequences and, and the expense, I think is the hardest part, which is why, um, and, and the misconceptions play into that too, right? Because you think if you're not doing it the most amazing way, you're not doing it. And that's simply not true. Like just yeah. going around and putting around in the woods on a TW200, looking at the view is just as good. It's just as much ADV adventure yeah. dual sport riding as it is jumping off a freaking cliff on a T7. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. I think 
One of the reasons you get into ADV or dual sport riding as an adult is usually because you like motorcycles at some capacity, or you just love being outside and want another hobby where you like to do something outside. I mean, that's why I did it. Like I'm, I'm not out here cliff jumping and trying to pop wheelies. Like I'm on my tractor dirt bike, just out enjoying views and liking fresh air. So I think it's, uh, that can be a little intimidating. Obviously those beginner things are very intimidating at first, but uh, one of the big things that I think can be really tough about it personally is that initial, like putting yourself into the community, whether it's signing up for training, finding people to ride with, etc. Because if you are a motorcycle rider, there are certain times in your life where I think you get used to just like riding by yourself. Like I had a lot of years where I mainly rode alone and cause I would just either commute or go do solo trips or whatever else. And it wasn't really until I got into adventure riding that I actually had people to go ride with and also needed people to go ride with because, you know, if you're pup hunting around and you know what you're doing, that's fine. Have an in reach on you, et cetera. But you really should always be out riding with a buddy of sorts, because if something happens, you need to have another set of hands there to help you. Uh, and sometimes finding the people to do that with you can be difficult and, so yeah, it's just, it's an investment of your time and effort. Um, usually the people that get into it already know a few people that ride, which is always great, but that can be a little difficult. And my advice there is always just don't be afraid to show initiative and ask people, find people on Facebook, find people on Instagram that go ride in your community and just ask if you can go with them. Um, if you're looking at training courses, just sign up and go. You know, it, you'll meet people there that are just like you, that are brand new and want to get into it. And then you'll have people that either are close by you or that you can go visit and ride their terrain and then they can come ride with you. So just, you know, try and swallow that social anxiety down and just kind of tighten your bootstraps and go. I swear it's worth it every time. And you'll be so much happier going and doing that versus wishing you had given it a shot later. Yeah, and just to, to add to that, I think, there's nothing wrong with riding by yourself, but it, that's not the time to push your comfort zone. And a lot of people, no. like, don't let not having anyone to ride with stop you, but you're not going to grow as fast or as much riding by yourself as you will, especially if you find someone a little better than you to follow around just because yeah. you can see what's possible. And, um, yeah. you know, and every, like every time I follow Ryan around, for instance, I, I learn something just because yeah. I see how fast he takes a corner and I go, oh, really? You can go that fast? And then I try it not as fast as him, but a little faster. Yeah. So that's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I spent a lot of time uh, before my wreck when I was still a little, probably pushing myself a little too hard. I would go out and ride uh, Three Creeks and all that stuff by myself all the time on my CB500X, which I probably shouldn't have been doing, but I wanted to learn and I didn't have anybody to go with me and I knew I was going to be leaving to live off my bike. And so I just had that mentality of, I got to figure out how to do this by myself. Now, granted, I wasn't doing anything insane. But I was getting out there and I was getting into terrain that I hadn't really been in myself and I had to figure it out. And sometimes you do need to do that. But just, again, make sure someone knows where you are. Make sure you have an in-reach on you. All of the things. Um, and by on you, I know Ben and I touched on this, on you, not on the bike. Have it on your person. Because if something happens and you go down and you only have use of one of your arms to get there, that's that's what you're going to have to do yeah, and deal visible. with. Yeah not in yeah. a pocket because if you're unconscious and somebody else has to hit it, they're not going to yeah. know where it is. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. What's the next one? <gasps> Back to more personal questions. What is one of the biggest misconceptions about Ben, AKA dork in the road? You sent me this list of questions and I did not prepare an answer for that one. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Top of your head. You go first. Let me think. You've had more I, time to process these questions because you wrote them. I think one of the them. biggest misconceptions I get, which is what I've been dealing with a lot lately, is that I'm purely just an adventure motorcycle rider. Um, I'm not. You know, I'm. I try to strive to tell everybody that while I love adventure motorcycling and I do it all the time and dual sport riding, obviously. Um, I'm a videographer, like my whole career and MO and everything I do is based around videography, not around bikes. Now, granted, I've had that wonderful ticket into the industry because of that. And it's been amazing, but 
the documentaries that I'm filming, one of them this year has nothing to do with motorcycles whatsoever. Uh, it has to do with keeping our public lands clean. The other one only really has a little bit to do with motorcycles and mainly has to do with helping out our veteran community and trying to raise men's and veteran mental health awareness, you know? So I appreciate having that be a tag for me of like, oh yeah, she's a motorcycle rider. She is whatever. But, um, that's, that's not really how I define myself. It's something I do versus who I am. We're opposites. Cause like I'm a writer first and I've learned yeah. enough videography to survive. Yeah. But, uh, if, if you just followed me around and filmed me all the time, I'd never touch a camera again. Like yeah. it's not, that's not, uh, recording and editing are not where my passion lies. Yeah. Um, if I could do the things I like, which is like teaching and helping people and, and getting out and experiencing right. fun things and sharing them without having to do that, I would. Um, I think a, a big misconception, and it, maybe not so much from people that follow the channel, you know, there's a thousand videos almost on my channel. So, like, if you watch me regularly, I hope you have a pretty good idea of who I am because I, I'm not afraid to show you how you should see the, the mechanic and video I just finished editing. It's just full of. I finally had to cut out a bunch of stupid things I did just because it was like, this is starting to look like a clown show. Anyway, um, that's re relevant to my point, which is I think sometimes people come in from the outside, newer viewers to the channel, and um, get, they think that I think I'm awesome or I'm trying to be awesome or that I think I'm an expert or I'm trying to be an expert. And they point, and so they feel the need to point out that like, oh, wow, well, you don't even ride the... I know. I say all the time I'm a terrible writer and even worse mechanic. Like, I'm maybe a, maybe now a mediocre writer. Maybe I'm not terrible anymore. And maybe I'm mediocre now. I don't know everything, and I you know all I do is share opinions and thoughts. I'm no I'm not an expert. In fact, it says so right in the disclaimer on my videos. I am not a doctor of motorcycling. Um, I should read it because I, I was actually pretty happy with it. I was in a mood that day. Something yeah. like uh, oh hell, I'm gonna read it because it's funny to me. Hold on. Um, so I guess the, I, the idea that I consider myself, I'm not an expert. I'm not a journalist. I'm not, I'm just a dude. Like that's yeah. all I am. And I'm only who I am. I don't know how to be anything else. So, yeah. you know, I think the other yeah. thing that I find so fascinating about this, and this is something that Ben and I talk about usually when it's just the two of us, but I'm going to highlight it now. People take this so seriously sometimes where it's kind of intense. And like, I, I, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I love motorcycle riding because it's fun. You know, I, I love doing it because it's fun, but you do have a lot of people in our ADV community, particularly in the quote unquote influencer and whatever realm that are just so die. It has to be like this, or you're not doing it right. Again, it kind of goes back to gatekeeping, but it gets super old, super quick. Like this is supposed to be a fun thing that anybody at any level can enjoy. And to try and kind of like either get on your case or my case for not being professional or an expert does get super annoying because to be honest, neither of us ever claim to be that. And most of the time, the people saying that aren't either. So everybody calm your tits and just enjoy being a motorcycle rider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if people come in from the outside and all they've seen, I think my channel is kind of unique in that I don't, I don't know, like. I just am what I am and that's all I am. Yeah. I'm Popeye. And I just, uh, I always appreciate the old guys that. that'll comment on your stuff and just be like, this isn't real dirt writing. And it's like, all right, man, I got to go watch this. another video. It's not right. a big deal. Sorry. I'm sorry. You found your way in here, dude. Nobody said it. Yeah. Like. You uh, don't have to stay, bro. You can keep going. Yeah. You know, like click this away, isn't the please. only channel. There's like 8,000 channels yeah. now. Do Jesus. Both a favor Christ. I know. Stop watching. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's my disclaimer. Uh, disclaimer for reasons. I am not a professional journalist, expert, motorcycle rider, or a mechanic. These videos are for entertainment purposes and represent my personal opinions and experiences. I'm just a dude who isn't even good at writing or making videos, so be smart <laughs> and don't risk life or limb trying to follow my example or advice. I love it. So perfect. So spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. I feel you. It's, it's kind of a weird thing about that community because it's just, I don't know... You gotta, you gotta be able to laugh at yourself and you gotta be, be able to enjoy this stuff. And, you know, none of us really know what the hell we're doing. There are very few people that actually have everything figured out. Um, and most of the people who tell you they do don't, and you shouldn't listen to them. So, yeah, or they're delusional. Yes, exactly. So 
Anyway, um, what is your favorite bike to ride? Could be any of the bikes you've ever had. Could be one that's sitting in your garage now. I just want to, that was, that's a question I get all the time. Right. Well, it's so varies. It's just like, what am I into right now? What, yeah. and what am I doing? What am I riding? Where am I going? I just, think if you had like a random beautiful afternoon, you had the option to do road, dirt, forest road, anything. And you got to pick right now, what bike would you hop on and go ride? It still depends on what I'm into at that moment, but I have an answer for you because the bike that I remember and think about fondly and wish that I could get on and ride again, just because I enjoyed everything I did on it is my DRZ 400 S. I miss that. Yeah. That's the only bike I've sold that I miss. Yeah. Um, I don't need another one because it would just, it would just sit there next to my 300 L and my 450 L and not get ridden. But Oh, such a sweet bike. It was, I yeah. learned so much. I leveled up so much. I became such a much better rider on that bike. Um, and I just really enjoyed everything except riding it on the highway. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not always fun, fun to ride on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I know what it is. I'm going to have an answer for everybody that they're not going to like. Pan America, obviously. No. Uh, I do love the Pan Americas for touring, by the way, but. Um, not for everything, that's for sure. Right. I kind of miss my Triumph Bonneville. Wow, interesting. I have, I have days where I wish I didn't sell it, uh, mainly because it was such a fun bike to commute and rip around on. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful bike. I took really good care of it. It was uh, kind of like this dark burnt orange and black uh, color combo. It was just... Mm, Perfect. But yeah, it was a super fun bike. I miss it all the time. Uh, but if I'm going to get out this afternoon and ride, if it's 50, 55 degrees and sunny, I'm hopping on the Trans Alp and probably heading up to go hop on some gravel road that's been sitting in the sun for a couple hours. It's melted down because I tell you what, you guys, the more I ride this bike, the more I'm wondering how in the hell I survived without it so long because holy shit, it's an awesome bike. It's oh my God. Fun super fun yeah the scramblers are great though i could see owning one someday i i really like that 1200 i rode yeah super fun there's so much fun um like let's see what do we got oh yeah okay this is always kind of a fun thing i think to do before the season starts but and i'll let you uh take this any direction you might like uh That's but dangerous. what uh what new things do you have coming this year whether it be for the channel or Anything else? Well, uh, the idea of doing part or most of a BDR by myself has been creeping into my head lately, which not something I would have considered a few years ago. And it will highly depend on if I'm successful with my current health goals, because I'm not going to put myself in a position where that would mean the difference between life and death. Uh, yeah. That would be stupid. It would not be wise. So... That's fun. There's a lot of the same old stuff. Um, the door camp out was a new thing last year that I'm excited that it was a huge success and to expand upon this year. And I have, I'm doing a lot better job planning. Uh, big thing, actually, there's two kind of big things. Uh, one big thing is, and I, I've mentioned this here and there, but my, uh, I've shifted all my merchandise over to Moto Camp Nerd site because I am bad at like packing and shipping orders and and keeping up on that. And so I just sent him all of my stickers and key tags and those new neck gaiters I had made, which my favorite piece of ADV gear there. I have a side story. I should just tell it um, forever. I've been meaning to make a video about why the neck gaiter is my favorite and most versatile piece of ADV gear. I had a script half written like a list, all this because it's, you can do a thousand things with it. Right. Yeah. Then one day I noticed Fortnite came out with a video talking about the humble neck gaiter. And I was like, damn it. Now I can't do it. But I yeah. watched it, and it was just a damn commercial for their neck gator. That's all it was. It didn't cover any things that I was going to say. So I was like, oh, sweet. I can still make my video. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Well, now I have a neck gator. And now if I make that video, it will be a commercial problem. I mean, not on purpose, but it's going to seem like that. So well, OK, but as, as somebody who literally almost always has a neck gator on, and during the summer, it's a bandana because, oh my god, like I think anybody who does that level of riding you just you want something on your neck you just do it's just how it is like i what? can't stand being going like on the highway especially 
and having the wind just kind of shoot by my neck. It's just, ugh, I can't deal with it. So well, yeah. and like first time you get a bee down your collar, oh, you're never yeah. going to run around with a big open collar ever again. Yeah, and you know dust, you pull it up like, and you can soak it, and it's air conditioning. Like I love the damn thing. Yeah. So yep. um, well, buy one of those now on motocampner.com. I am. <laughs> we are just like sales pitch. You know, I don't make money off of of merch or I try not to, I try to set the prices as low as I can because I kind yeah. of, I'm kind of honored that anybody would want to wear it in the first place. So I want to make it as easy to get your hands on as I can. Yeah. Um, but Mortal Cat Murder makes a couple bucks because you know, we want to, uh, we want to support him. Um, and I guess the other big thing, I forgot you were teeing me up here, um, is, uh, I am no longer running giant loops, YouTube channel and, uh, <gasps> it's time, for, time for baby bird to spread his wings and fly. Um, I will be doing some work with Moto Camp Nerd uh, going we, uh, forward. <clears throat> we both will be doing some work. I wasn't going to spoil yours. That's fine. Some work with Moto Camp Nerd going forward. We really want to support him and his business. Um, yes. He's a friend. And I think there's a real opportunity there to grow and become the resource for yeah. Moto Camping. And we want to help with that goal and help Ben get out of his very not fun job and into doing this thing full time. So we're yeah. into that. Yep. Um, and... Yeah, other than that, it's kind of like rallies, filming. Uh, I'm switching editors because Matt went and got a real job. But uh, new editor is somebody that you guys already know. And my backup new editor is someone who's staring at me. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you'll see some stuff. I can't afford her. That's why she's not my editor already. We'll figure it out. It's fine. real good. <laughs> anyway, I think that's it. I don't know. You talk. And then when you remind me, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm doing that, too. Yeah, so my big things for the year are just that uh, I am going to revamp doing my cinematic narrative videos uh, this summer. I have missed doing that a lot. It is a huge creative form for me of self-expression and also getting to take everybody on these amazing adventures with me and actually talk through real life things that I think are very fun and really relatable to everybody, whether you like motorcycles or not. So that'll be something I pick up doing. Uh, the other few things I'm doing, or I'm going to be doing my first ever BDR with Ben doing the NorCal BDR, which I'm so excited about. Both of my documentaries from the last eight months will be premiering this spring and early summer. Um, obviously Ben and I touched on the VB40 documentary that will be premiering at the giant loop ride, but I will also be releasing my public land stewards documentary which as of this week, uh, Tread Lightly is also going to be help helping to sponsor. So this is going to be a much bigger project than we really kind of thought. It's going to get some legs behind it. And we're just hoping to spread the word, uh, not only amongst the ADV and motorcycle community, but amongst anybody that uses public lands recreationally, just how to better keep their public lands clean so we don't lose accessibility and we don't lose the land that we love to go and recreate on, whether you're in a motorcycle, whether you're overlanding, whether you're on a bicycle, whatever it is. Um, you know, this is something I'm super passionate about. It's the nonprofit that I put my heart and soul into. So very excited about both of those films coming out. And otherwise, yeah, I'm just going to be really kind of enjoying having my summer in Oregon, doing some events, uh, doing some other things just kind of there and, and also helping both the Bens with Moto Camp Nerd. Uh, ben, aka Dork in the Road, will be doing more of the day-to-day uh, -day video series, talking through gear and product reviews, and then I will be uh, doing the occasional product review with Ben, adventuring with Ben, and also be just kind of testing random things, quote-unquote, in the wild occasionally. So it should be a lot of fun. I think we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, we're basically married, it sounds like. We're doing all... <laughs> Work work she is my point. work wife. I should have yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. In that question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're fun. both okay with it. You know, yeah. we give each other a lot of shit. And it keeps things light. I, it's great. Yeah. yeah. So, what what other zingers have you got in our short remaining time? I guess uh, this is a question that I get from people usually more in person, uh, but I would love your perspective on it, which is. What is it like to work in the motorcycle industry? That's a broad one. Uh, two, I'll, I will say two things. Yeah, I shouldn't. Okay, whatever. Um, so one of the first things, uh, one of the first kind of light bulbs that went off for me about what it's like to work in the motorcycle industry 
was at the AIM Expo I went to uh, two years ago. I think the first time I'd been to a big trade show. And uh, I've been to plenty of conferences and trade shows as a teacher, right? Um, you know, the, I, the, the program I ran for the district had a national conference every year. I'd been to, you know, multiple trainings, summer institutes, all these things. And, uh, but the AIM Expo was the first expo I've ever been to with a bar. And then not just one, there were like several, just like on the show floor. Like you're just, and it's in Vegas, so maybe that's part of it. But uh, I was just like, Harold, there's a bar here. <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm just really used to teaching conferences because you can even get a cup of coffee half the time at those things. Um, and I think the other thing that's really, and so coming from education, this is my perspective, right? Where, where people are, you know, passionate, um, but can be a little, I don't want to say uptight, but definitely like professionalism is important and there's standards and you know you have to wear a little bit nicer clothes and whatever um to this industry where i have negotiated i can't tell you how many deals drunk next to a campfire um like i remember when uh when andrew and i first set up my <laughs> our sponsorships so the first set of sponsored videos i did for him we had steak and bourbon and like we just talked about business over steak and bourbon it was great like i came home from yeah. my wife talked to my wife i was like I just closed the deal and I'm buzzed. Um, I had some Buffalo trace. It was fantastic. So yeah. it's definitely a different scene. And I think the other thing that is really interesting about the motorcycling uh, industry, and you tell me if I'm off base on this, because you have, you probably know more people than I do, but it's a weird uh, dichotomy because there's a lot of the old school that still exists. Like people don't understand what influencers are, what they do. Why would I send you product or sponsor you? You know, they're, they're very into traditional advertising, print advertising, um, some industry, some companies, and there can be companies that make the same competing products. Some companies don't get it at all. They're very stuck in the past, which yeah. is not a, like, I, there are some things about the past I wish we could get back. Like, I love going to Moto Corsa because it feels like an old school dealership where you can just hang out, talk motorcycles, whatever. Love you, Shaheen. Yeah, it does not feel like the sleazy, hey, what are you looking at today? Well, we don't, you know, we got $3,000 in markup and 15% interest. That's our special <laughs> today. Yeah. Um, so that piece, so, it, but there's also companies and brands that are, like, super savvy and, like, yeah. all about it. Revit is a brand that is, like, on top of it. Yeah, um, 100%. actively recruiting and getting stuff in people's hands, getting on, getting um, you know their product in front of people. You yeah, know, Alpine Stars does a good job. I'm impressed with Rocky Mountain and Revzilla have worked with both. The yep. the retailers seem to get it more than the brands themselves. And then there's like you got to use a telegraph machine to get in touch with somebody at certain motorcycle companies who haven't upgraded their motorcycles in many years. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. That's what's interesting to me about this industry. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a weird, it's a weird, it's in a place kind of out of time because it's modern and old school at the same time, depending on where you are. And you have to be able to kind of navigate both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think without getting on too much of a soapbox because we're hitting our time capacity, I think one of the big things that you learn working in this industry are uh, one that's you hit a certain platform where you don't need any more products. And, uh, and this is where the influencers kind of have started to learn. I think in the last year, especially this industry is constantly evolving. And one of the big things that has happened is like so many other things uh, and so many other aspects of um, social media, et cetera. The age of the influencer is dying very quickly. And what I mean by that is, Making money as an influencer is dying very quickly unless you already have a business behind you. And the reason for that is because a lot of these companies have started to realize that they don't have to pay you to get a picture on Instagram or a reel on Instagram. They're getting tagged by people that are out there all the time doing these awesome things. And they're not paying them anything. They're maybe sending them a pair of hippo hands or maybe a pair of rocks risers or whatever else for free. Um, and then they keep getting content. But that idea that you're going to make money doing it doesn't really exist anymore, especially not with motorcycles. I know there are other industries where that is still very prevalent, but that does not exist anymore for us. So 
you do hit a point in the industry where if you are trying to be an influencer, you need to start to kind of broaden your horizon a bit because you can only pack so much stuff in the garage. And Ryan and I both know that. Um, my roommate Ryan and I have six motorcycles in our garage and so much gear and everything else. We can barely stand up in there. Uh, so it's just what happens what over time. What a terrible time. problem to have. But you I poor know, girl. It's terrible. I know life sucks, but you know, from a working standpoint, though, one of the things you just have to understand is you need to have a sellable skill set in any industry, but particularly in motorcycles right now. I took advantage of that, basically being a non-influencer, but I'm a videographer and I work in the industry because I'm a good videographer and because I actually get out there and I film and I work with a lot of companies to understand the social media aspect of aspect of things for marketing, promotion, etc. So the industry is wild. It's just, it's changed so much since Ben and I have been active in it. I think the big thing is just, it's small. So you get to know everybody real quick. It's true. And don't it's want to burn very, any bridges. It's very fun and very chill. Like Ben said, I have also made deals fireside with a couple bourbons and talking about upcoming projects. It's awesome. It's a great way to form friendships and solid business relationships. But the other aspect of it is nothing is ever guaranteed. You know, just because an event is on the calendar doesn't mean it's going to happen. Just because somebody says they're going to send you some stuff doesn't mean it's going to happen. These things go sideways all the time. So you kind of just got to be ready for anything. And the best thing you can do is just set yourself up for success by having a skill set you can market for yourself. Yep. Yeah. And you, you need to get, I mean, Soapbox, you, you brought it out. I'm going to step on it. Um, I think... It's not not the key to success necessarily, but it's always interesting to me to see people who come in with the goal of being an influence. Like I'm going to be an influencer. I'm going to be whatever. Yeah. And, um, and, and you can get you can become successful. People do overnight, but then they don't know what to do with it. And yeah. it, and it gets hard. It, something changes. Something shifts. The formula's not working. You never knew what was working in the first place. And these people disappear. Like yeah. And I think. If it's not, if you're not, if you're in it just for like money and quote unquote fame, um, you will not survive adversity. You need to have a no. reason, a why beyond that, right? And yeah. like, you know, I have, I love teaching and helping people. That's why I'm here, and yeah. I like sharing my adventures. And I I genuinely enjoy. People always ask me, does it suck now that your job is your hobby? No, because. <laughs> I, I will go out and ride right now. And, you know, if I have to throw it, that's why I said I'm a rider first and a, and a videographer second. I'll just throw my camera on if I get something great. Yeah. If I don't, whatever. I got to go riding. But you yeah. have to, you can't be in it for the money or the fame because when it gets hard, that will not carry you through. You have to no. love what you're doing, be dedicated, have a work ethic. You have to show up every day, even when it sucks. Yeah. And that is hard um, when your product is yourself. Yeah. It's very difficult to separate yourself from your work when the product that you create is you. When people cre criticize your product, they're not criticizing a painting over here. No, literally you as a person, that's your yeah. product. And that is yeah. hard. And if you're not in it for a reason other than I want to be popular and famous, that's, that's, a, that's a boner killer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other thing I would say just from working within social media and with a lot of influencers in the last few years is just make sure you have a backup plan because uh -huh. with how everything is set up now, the minute you stop producing or doing anything to continue your relevancy within social media platforms, it does, you, you don't exist just like Ben said. And so, you know, even if you are doing like back to back to back trips and these amazing things, you are going to come home and you're going to be exhausted and you're not going to have consistent content to put out. So my advice is always, if you're trying to do the influencer thing, I'm going to warn you against it. You can always try. But if you do decide to push that, do what I did. Make friends in the industry. Get to know the people that are working at Revit, at Alpine Stars, or even at some of the smaller brands that I've worked with, like Hippo Hands. And make friends with them. See if there's a skill set or something you guys can work out so you can work with them. Um, or if you are somebody like Ben who likes to teach, like Ben ended up, helping to teach motorcycle training and still loves to be able to do those type of events. So find a little pocket that you can invest yourself into and then make it marketable to companies. Even if you are somebody that came out of sales somewhere else and you want to hop into motorcycle sales, 
go for it. Just go talk to the guys, see what they're looking for, see what you need to do, etc. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's a very tough industry. It's very small. And you know, if you're coming into this thinking you're going to make a shit ton of money, I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't happening. You're so, <laughs> you're so wise. And the thing about what you're saying is it's hard to hear. And a lot of people won't hear it. Oh, but I know. That's Nobody how, likes to listen to me. That's how I know bike. it's, it's good advice because it is like, damn, really? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great, like, again, I'm super lucky. I'm not here to complain about my poor life with all the motorcycles in the garage and all the trips I get to go on. But it doesn't no. mean that there isn't shit on the back end that I have to deal no. with. But also, just so everybody is aware, Ben is one of those lucky people and rare people that, like, he connected with a lot of people at the right time and just was able to build a career around it. And what he was able to do is something that right now is almost impossible from scratch. Well, so, it's only getting harder because you're now fighting 7,000 AI channels. As you say, the AI aspect of all of this is crazy. And we'll have a whole separate podcast episode with AI because I'm sure we have a whole thing to talk about with that. But yeah, um, yeah. in We're general, great. though, the motorcycle industry is one of the best places ever, though. I love it. It's chill. It's fun. You get to know everybody and everybody's super friendly. And the people that aren't don't stick around. So everyone knows who they are, too. Yeah. They're not sitting by the fire with us drinking bourbon. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Well, I think we covered everything. Those were the well top done. questions. Yeah. But yeah, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to message Ben or myself. We'll probably do another FAQ episode here. Another couple, another 10, 15 episodes, just because we do get them a lot. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions for us, you can leave them in the comments. Uh, if if you like this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to us. We are on the Apple podcast, Spotify, I believe Amazon, Google, etc. Music, YouTube, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Also worth pointing out, this is our 10th episode. And I read a statistic <gasps> that 80% of podcasts don't make it to their 10th episode. So we're crushing it. Crushing it. So yeah. I'm quitting after this. Yeah, we are. We're just, yeah. mic drop moment. 10, we did it. Peace. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you, everybody. We adore you. Uh, as always, live wild, ride free. And please, oh my God, it's so important to me that you please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Bye. Oh, thank you.